back, relax, and maybe get yourself a snack. Me and you gonna have a little chat about books. Hi guys, so I'm here today to review three books, all part of the same series for you. I have The Traitor's Blade by Sebastian de Castel, the second one which is Night's Shadow, and the third one which is Saint's Blood. These are all part of the same series. I have been loving it. But I haven't read the fourth one yet so you're only getting a review of these first three until I read the fourth and I will review that separately. I heard about these books ages and ages ago when the first one came out. I think Sam and Michael were reading them and I'll put links to both their channels below. They loved them, they said that they were great, they said they were kind of in the same vein as like the Three Musketeers in fantasy and it was just epic awesomeness and it was like superb sword and sorcery, amazing like bands of brothers being there for each other and helping one another out and being awesome. It sounded really good and so I picked up the first years ago and I just didn't get around to reading it for such a long time and I don't know why but eventually this year I finally did get around to reading them when the fourth one was coming out I was like oh I should get to these and I loved it. I knew I kind of would because I really do tend to agree with Sam and Michael a lot of the time and if I know both of them like it then I'm probably going to like it too and I did. It was such a great adventure story, such a great bond between the three main characters. It's just awesome and I love love this series. So we follow a main character called Falcio who is basically the leader of the Great Coats and this is the Great Coats series and he is part of a kind of past gone by. Um, there used to be a king who ruled over the land and this king had an order of Great Coats who were these amazing people who defended him. They went out and they defended the laws of the king and the honour of the king and helped the local people in villages and towns to get justice for any wrongs that were done to them. They were legendary figures in the past and the king brought them back into reality when he was crowned and Falcio Belmond, who is our main character, is one of those people who was very very close to the king. He in fact was one of the first great coats ever and he's pretty washed up by the time we meet him. Not in terms of skill but in terms of being needed and necessity. People in this world at the point where we join the story have a huge dislike for many of the great coats. The order has been disbanded, the king has been killed and he and his two friends are kind of just left alone. Um, they are actually referred to as Tretari because they're like tatter cloaks and they are looked down upon by nearly everyone from the lowborn to the highborn. Everyone just kind of hates the great coats. Their order separated so they don't even know where most of the other people that they were great friends and colleagues with have gone and basically they're just alone in the world but they have each other. So they do tend to go around on adventures and they do try and enforce the king's justice even though the king is dead and they just try their best to be like noble loyal people. Alongside Falcio we have Brasti and Kess, they are his two loyal friends, brothers in arms and they are great in their own ways too. Kest is the best fighter you will ever encounter. He is a master swordsman and a master of many other things too. He's one of those people who's sickeningly good at everything but is quite a lovely noble character, very loyal, very loving and so you kind of forgive him all his perfection at everything. We also have Brasti who is kind of the other end of the spectrum. He is excellent with a bow but not much else and he has charisma upon charisma. He is dirty, gritty, funny, crude and lewd. He definitely doesn't mind throwing around banter and jokes and being a bit nasty and crude and silly and he is probably the life of any party you would ever go to. He is such a laughable character but also has a real deep heart and has some really raw moments throughout the series which I loved. But yeah, he just makes me smile so much. He's probably my favourite character in the series, is Brasti. So in this first book we follow the three of them as they encounter a woman trying to poison the man they are working for. And once they see that happen, they are trying to track down who this woman was, but they instantly get pulled into another plot 
Alongside this, we also know that each of them has a mission that the king himself left to them before he disbanded the greatcoats and was killed. So we know that each of them has something that they need to find or do in the world, and we assume that all the other greatcoats have the same situation, but no one knows what the other quests are, and no one is working together, so it's kind of a quest of despair. No one really understands or knows whether the king actually had a plan, whether there's actually anything to find, and they're kind of muddling their way through their adventure, hoping that they'll stumble across something along the way, which they do. So that is book one. It's excellent. I really, really enjoyed it, and I definitely found myself laughing and smiling at the crude humour, the amazing banter between the three of them, and just the way that they were so silly and great together, but they also had really noble, strong hearts, and it was so good. So that's book one, and I ended up, I think, giving book one either a 4 or a 4.5, I'm not certain, but I really, really enjoyed it. And of course, I went straight on to book number two. This book continues their adventure. I won't say too much about it, but in this one, I feel like we got a lot more depth into the world. This world is set up with magic being a sort of small part of it, but becoming a bigger part as the series goes on. The majority of this focuses on meeting other warriors, meeting people loyal to the dukes of the world who are evil enemies, trying to sort out trysts and, and arguments and evil people in the world. But there is magic and there's definitely elements of that coming more into the story in book two and book three. I also really enjoyed encountering some very different types of people in this book. We have different hierarchies of sections of the public. So there are the Tratari, um, who are the greatcoats, and we have bards who are sort of magical, musical people who can tell tales that enrich and enhance people's imaginations and really bring them to life in front of them. They're like essentially magical bards, which is great. And then we also meet some other characters too who are pretty essential to controlling the politics of this world. We meet some really evil people who torture people, so there is a lot of like very adult content in this series, um, but with that said it's also super light-hearted at times and feels really really enjoyable and exciting throughout. There is some really dark stuff that happens in the end of this book and it was pretty horrible to read to be honest, but I really enjoyed the way that Sebastien de Castel built the story to that point and made it just super interesting to get there and super intriguing about what the mystery was and how they were going to solve it and the way that they kind of come up with solutions to impossible problems always makes me intrigued and smile because it's just so different from what I would ever expect people to do and I love that about the three of them. They're just like the crazy three musketeers who are awesome. So I loved book two. I think I gave this a five stars. It was just excellent. I really, really enjoyed it. And I don't think I could really fault this one in terms of my enjoyment levels. It was just so good. It's a bigger book than the first, but so well worth it because yeah, excellent, excellent storytelling in this one. The third one in the series once again builds on the previous two with the same characters at the forefront. But by now we have gathered quite a following behind these characters. They're sort of in a political turmoil and they have a lot of influence in the world, which is more than they expected to have considering their whole enterprise has been disbanded up until now and they've been roaming for years looking for the things that the king had set them. By this point they have found some of those things, they're starting to piece some of the puzzle that the king left them together, they're starting to understand the politics of the land, starting to really get involved in some of the magics of this world, face some horrible enemies who are quite persuasive and quite irritable and nasty and horrible at various points of the story, they encounter some magical beasts and creatures at different points in the book, and they follow lots of different other saints as well. The sainthood and the people of religion and magic kind of blend a lot more in this book, which is why it's called Saint's Blood, and it was really interesting to learn yet more about the world. I feel like every book in this series just expands upon what we already know and opens it up for us further and further to the point where now I am just so intrigued about what is going to happen in book four and how it's all going to wrap up because there's so many things still to understand and uncover. So I'm really excited about reading book four. I'm definitely looking forward to doing it very soon, hopefully. 
but yeah I absolutely loved this one as well not quite as much as the second because I feel like this one was building up for what the fourth book is going to finish with and I didn't feel like it was quite as rounded as the second one for me but it was still excellent so I gave it a 4.5 and I would definitely still hugely recommend the series. I'm so, so looking forward to going on to book four. So if you have not yet started this series, the Great Coat series, now is an excellent time to do so. All four books are currently out in the series and it's finished, supposedly, possibly. Maybe there'll be more coming in the same world or something like that, I'm not certain. I don't know how it ends yet, but I loved it. Obviously I gave the first 4.5, the second 5, the third 4.5. It's a really highly rated series so far. I'm assuming book 4 will also get a really high rating. Do leave me your comments down below if you've read this, I'd love to chat with you. Thank you all so much for watching, go and pick up a copy of the first and read it, and I will see you all very soon in my next video. Bye guys! Thank you, Fortune, my fifty old today. Go pick up a book, then come back and chat with me again.